are poor economically. Thank you all for joining us. You're watching Addis News Hour with the news. I'm Tabitha John. Do stay with us. Addressing the sixth year, second extraordinary session of the parliament over Tigray's military operation, Ethiopian Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed said the law enforcement operation was successfully undertaken with no recorded civilian casualties in the region. The Premier further commended the commanders of the different fronts in the operation for their gallantry leadership to make the mission meet its goal within a short period of time. Alula Taklamariam has the details. In a breaking news aired on November 4, 2020, Ethiopians headed to shocking news about the orchestrated attack on the Ethiopian National Defense Force stationed in the Northern Command. That moment ignited an irresistible reaction from across the country, where Ethiopians showed their solidarity with the National Defense Force. In a quick counterattack against the TPLF clique, the Ethiopian National Defense Force struck fast toward Mekele City under different fronts, defeating their enemies. After three weeks of law enforcement operation in Tigray, the Prime Minister announced last Saturday that the operation was completed in Mekele, claiming victory against the PLF. Addressing the House of People's Representatives, Abi explained the immediate cause in the process of the operation. Of communication, you need know the story. So our first move was to stop their move towards Gondor and uh, and, and, and Bajam, that was on Tuesday. So we began defense work on, on Wednesday. We, we started to gather up our forces. After one, two days, we organized ourselves and we tried to, uh, to close the borders. When we did that, the, the force that fled to Eritrea, we wanted to know how many of our forces are in Eritrea. I, I, I went there taking three generals. The reason we did that was we wanted to see the situation of our army. The Premier further commended commanders of different fronts in the operation for their gallantry leadership to make the mission meet its goal within a short period of time. In the past, General Ababao, in a war between Eritrea, knows every detail in the area, the terrain, and General Getacho also understands Salambasa in the area. Therefore, we know that they know it, if not equal, if not better, equally as the enemy. They were able to identify terrains and difficult locations, and we used them for that. Abi said the law enforcement operation was successfully undertaken with no recorded civilian casualties. The Honorable House, one thing I want you to understand is that when a MiG goes to the other side, it will be the responsibility of the captain to control the navigation and for the execution. It wasn't like that. It's not like that uh, with the drone. The drone, every direction, every target is inputted. And every target is signed and approved. The Honorable House can see that. Every missile launched is backed by a signature of an authority. 99% hit their target, 99% did not have collateral. When it was suspicious, we don't fire, especially at night, because we don't want to kill children. They're ours. Between the Special Force and the Air Force, the capacity created was unassumed by the enemy. They assume drone for firing, but we're using drones to surveil, to monitor their activities. We're watching them day and night. 
The TPLF clique has been masterminding a number of conflicts using criminal activities across the country. The incumbent seemed reluctant, and many complained, saying, why this much patience to the criminals? Prime Minister Abi Ahmed answered this question raised by members of parliament today while briefing on current affairs. Emmanuel Jorge tells you the story. The Ethiopian government has showed its maximum patience in the effort to ensure peace and stability in the Tigray region, while the TP Leaf clique has frequently been provoking the federal government to go into conflict. Members of the People's Representatives ask why this much patience is necessary for this rogue clique. TPLF did its best to reverse the change by employing underage youths in the military and was in preparation to dismantle the country, but there was lots of patience by the government. Why so much patience? Because of the patience, it was very costly. And our army was attacked during night while their sleep believed there among its own people and those that were within the army also killed the army because they wanted to rob armaments. This is a despicable act to be written and recognized in history. So, shouldn't we have taken measures to ensure rule of law and the constitution was maintained? Shouldn't we have taken actions faster? The junta has been engaged in dividing the country along ethnic and religious wise, creating unrest and huge acts of corruption. The government has showed too much patience, well, and it was not clear for many of us why it happened to be like this. The mass killings and genocide taking place in some parts of Ethiopia. Why could not we have stopped it ahead of time? The Prime Minister answered that it was difficult to take actions earlier before making the National Defense Force properly functional and under the control of the federal government. When we look at uh, the Defense Force uh, doing the same would be of, uh, problematic, so we wanted to uh, uh, gather as much data as possible to have a, a, a closer understanding and uh, the results indicated that the Defense Force uh, it was very difficult to, to change the defense force within, within uh, the coming five years. For instance, in the defense force, the four star full generals from the Tigray region, uh, they constitute 60%, and from the entire other nation, it's 40%. This is the four star generals. Going one step lower, major generals, the, that's Lieutenant Generals, the numbers is smaller, 50% of them were from Tigray region. One step lower, Major Generals, 45% from Tigray. Brigadier Generals, 40% from one place. Colonels, 58% from one region. Lieutenant Colonel, 66% from one region. One step lower, 53%. What does this mean? If I change the general, the, the colonel, and then the, 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 the lower rank, so to bring a balanced army in the coming 10 years, it was quite impossible. From uh, general to lower ranks, 55% are from Tigray region. The Prime Minister added that the Information Network Security Agency's malfunctioning was also another difficulty they have been in while striving to stop the TPLF clique from causing such worsened danger. The institution cannot even report, uh, the security apparatus cannot even report what its own head did. Huh? This uh, individual that used to be head of uh, security office, we began conversing with the Tigran uh, government, uh, asking them uh, uh, at least uh, at least he should return the armaments uh, that he stole. And uh, as you know, they have their own media. This uh, individual, the Abai media. Using government funds, of course. And even in, in, in the palace, he has his own soldiers. Yeah, if I want to travel outside, I don't know what can happen on the air. I cannot 
trust the airplane. So if I do not have a liberty for myself, what can I do? This must be clearly understood by the parliament. It was not something easy. Meanwhile, the sixth year, second extraordinary session also addressed issues of international intervention on Ethiopia's domestic matters. The Premier said, as Ethiopia is a founding member of the UN and AU, no one can advise this nation about diplomacy and multilateralism to Ethiopians and Ethiopia. Abi stressed Ethiopians would never negotiate to hand over their independence and sovereignty to anyone, even if they are poor economically. Jerusalem Bet Prime Minister Abi Yohannes said the Ethiopian diasporas had been financing the TPLF mafias over the past months. According to the Premier, Ethiopian diasporas are not conscious enough to understand the conspiracy and wrong deeds of the tyrant TPLF mafias in Ethiopia. The other one is the diaspora. The diaspora, as you know, they love their country. When something happens, they'll be pissed. They go out on campaigns. But the diaspora were also supporting the junta in finance. Several times we said, this power or this force was getting more foreign currency more than the government. The premier stressed Ethiopian diasporas need to wear their consciousness so as to use legal ways to transact their money in the legal channel. He pointed out illegal money transaction may bring conducive environment to outlawed groups or mafias in developing nations. They were giving weapons with which their brothers were killed. We know that when a money comes into the country in an illegal means, there are benefits, there are profits, but it might kill your brother, your own brother. We can make it legal and we can find ways of adjusting, but it should not be used for the enemies, for illegal groups, so it kills our citizens. So we have to watch ourselves in that regard. The government of Ethiopia is prioritized to further reform various sectors like the security service reform to restore sustainable peace and prosperity in Ethiopia. That news was a news in which in a similar account, Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed said Ethiopian diasporas have been financing the TPLF junta more than supporting the government forces over the past months. According to the Premier, Ethiopian diasporas have sent vast amount of foreign currency to the TPLF cliques for the sake of illegal transaction profits. And Tabtamu Ashagwe presented that story. On the northern command of the Ethiopian National Defense Force based in Mekele, the federal government has begun offensive against TPLF. But the international community did not understand the reality on the ground. That's why Ethiopia is working to clear out distortions and wrong images being painted by the TPLF and its partners. On the House of People's Representatives' extraordinary session, members of parliament have also urged the government to give attention to clarify the real situation of the country and why the government has taken this law enforcement measure to the global community. Addressing queries of the parliamentarians, Prime Minister Abi said the government has been taking this law enforcement measures after much patience of TPLF's illegitimate deeds and violences and efforts for dialogue. However, the global community should understand Ethiopia is the founder of UN and AU. Then any country could not preach the value of peace for Ethiopia and Ethiopians, the Premier added. And most of our friends started pressuring us to get into discussions. As this honorable house knows, we love to discuss. We hate war. We know its consequences. We begged until the time they attacked us, but after this, controlling Gondor, Weldia, that was what's left to say. It was not the issue of the army only. When things, when tensions grew, they started resorting politics. And if that's the case, you don't attack the northern division. No country will do this.
If the army is attacked in any country, any country will respond furiously. We know diplomacy. Ethiopia is a country that established the United Nations. Ethiopia is a country that established the African Union. You cannot tell us about multilateralism. We're known about by peace in Korea and different parts of Africa. We served for peace. The premier called on the global community to understand that Ethiopians could not hand over their dignity and sovereignty to anyone, even if they are poor economically. What we want to tell our friends is that if you want to be friends with us, you have to understand us also. We could be poor, but we have years of experience in being a government. More than some of your countries. We've been countries before your countries. We don't confuse a country and a government. We want you to understand that. Not today. Even 100 years ago, we gave our neck to be free from colonialism. You don't have to forget that. Don't blame us. That's not our fault. This is in our blood, transmitted from our fathers. Well, money will not pressure us. You can only work together with us. You cannot win Ethiopia when you have Ethiopians living here. Today or tomorrow, you can't win as long as Ethiopians live on this land. According to Prime Minister Abe, the Ethiopian government has been discussing with the legal Tigray interim administration aside with the law enforcement operation. In the past two, three weeks, while we're still into war, we're having dialogues. These dialogues were made with Dr. Mulu, who is the legal authority in Tigray. What will we do in Tigray? The first one is enforce the law. And two, don't fight in the city so the people won't be affected. Citizens will be okay then. And three, start rehabilitating the regions, the cities, as soon as you occupy them. That was the mission given to us. We based on that. We cannot, the fact that we didn't sit and on a dialogue with enemies and with criminals does not make it that we were not interested in a dialogue. Ethiopia has one government, and that government respects the law, upholds the rule of law, and can be asked according to the law and gives respect to its people. As much as possible, it will create a democracy that looks like Ethiopia. We don't want to look like others. We want to look like ourselves. Over the past two and a half years, there are 113 conflicts orchestrated throughout the country, except in Tigray region. All these conflicts supported financially through training, through media organized for this to give an impression the new administration is weak, Prime Minister Abiy noted. In that news, the PM addressed issues of international intervention on Ethiopia's domestic matter. The Premier said as Ethiopia is a founding member of the UN and AU, no one can advise this nation about diplomacy and multilateralism to Ethiopians and Ethiopia. The Premier went on to say that Ethiopians would never negotiate to hand over their independence and sovereignty to anyone, even if they are poor economically. Jerusalem Betzaha has presented that story for you. During the six years of the Parliament, members of the House have raised various issues regarding the current situation of the country. The members asked the next tasks of the government after completing the law enforcement operation. Premier Abi responded.
You're watching Addis News Hour. Prime Minister Abi Ahmed told the parliament building the Tigray region is the next task of the government after the operation gets completed. He also said democracy is the real healing medicine for the problem, adding the sixth general election should be free and fair. Goshum al has more. During the six-year second ordinary session of the parliament, members of the House have raised various issues regarding the current situation of the country. The members asked the next tasks of the government after completing the law enforcement operation. Premier Abi responds. Our following work is building Tigray. Tigrayan people uh, is under ration with lots of difficulties. This ration is getting uh, uh, lower, smaller, sorry. So we need to address this uh, dire economic situations. We need to support and uh, organize. Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed reiterated that the sixth general election should be free and fair, calling the Electoral Board of Ethiopia discharge their responsibility accordingly. He also recounted democracy is the real healing for Ethiopia. Apart from that, we will work to make sure that the coming uh, election will be democratic for Ethiopia. Democracy is, democracy is the real healing medicine. It has to be accountable, free and fair elections as per uh, rules and regulations of the electoral board we need or we all need to be uh, hold accountable to that and the parliament must do a follow-up of monitoring work prime minister abiy ahmed confirmed that close to 30,000 civilians displaced due to security threat he also took the occasion to remind reinstating works are being done and will be done in collaboration with the sudanese government and the united nations the federal police has announced the seizure of illegal weapons in a raid conducted at homes of military officers who have been arrested over a suspected terror plot. The federal police stated it has seized a large number of illegal weapons in a raid it has been conducting since the TPLF junta committed the atrocity against the Northern Command of the National Defense Force. In a raid it conducted with the Defense Ministry, the Federal Police also captured guns that are not allowed to be possessed privately that might have caused a wide range of devastation if not seized. Police also seized military binoculars, GPS, satellite phones, grenades, Kalashnikovs, Brents, and military uniforms replaced by the new ones at homes of military officers who have been arrested over suspected terror plots in the country. The weapons are to be used by recruits of the TPLF junta members of the Oromo Liberation Front or Elef Shani Group for terrorism in various parts of the country, including the capital, Addis Ababa. Federal police indicated that the weapons seized were transferred from arsenals to private holders by top military officers who were at various posts in the Ministry of Defense Force. State of Emergency Fact Check has refuted the news circulating that the Ethiopian federal government has dismissed the South Sudan ambassador to Ethiopia as fiction. The National Fact Check platform stated that the fictional news has been perpetrated by elements supporting the disinformation campaign of the criminal TPLF clique. It is to be recalled that Sudan Post yesterday wrote that Ethiopian ambassador to South Sudan Fasaha Shaul left Juba. The Ethiopian Human Rights Commission takes note of the statement issued by the Office of the Prime Minister on 28th November 2020 announcing the completion of the final phase and cessation of the military operation in Tigray region and the outlines of next steps listed. EHRC's previous advisories and communications on human rights concerns, putting emphasis on the necessity of protecting civilians from harm, and in view of the current situation in Tigray region, the Commission urges the federal government to be guided by its duty to respect and protect human rights throughout the subsequent steps of rehabilitation and redress. 
EHRC calls on the government to urgently address the immediate setting up of the logistical and humanitarian infrastructure, which is indispensable to allow reconnecting separated families, the relocation and return of displaced persons and refugees, as well as allowing access to independent and transparent investigations into conducts of grave human rights violations and resulting humanitarian crisis to ensure accountability for all human rights violations redressed to victims, as well as putting in place of credible and inclusive mechanisms of reconciliation and justice. And finally, the State Minister of Finance, Dr. Eyob Tekalint, said that the government can't sit for any negotiation with the rebel TPLF junta. The state minister also said that the group, along with some companies, has committed horrendous crimes by financing, planning, executing the number of criminal activities. Kasa Unjani has the following report. Speaking on the occasion, State Minister of Finance Dr. Yota Kalin said that the government won't sit for any negotiation with the hostage Megale TPLF criminals. The State Minister also affirmed that the government has tried for two and a half years to negotiate with this group to solve the gaps in Makabali. As far as political discourse, negotiation, a peaceful regulation of differences concerned, this government has done this tirelessly for the last. Uh, two years, two and a half years. Uh, we left no stone unturned to uh, bring uh, TPLF to an existing table. But now what they've done is they have attacked our military base in, in, in Tigray. Uh, but more importantly, I think they, they have planned uh, and executed a treasonous act by waging war uh, on Ethiopian people, uh, by working to destabilize the entire country and the entire region. Um, and as of now, uh, for me, uh, this rebel group is um, it's akin to a suicide bomber. So they have taken a certain city or stage. Um, so the kind of discussion you would have with them is when they defuse. They're, they're supposed to surrender, um, give um, their hands to the, uh, to the military men and women. And then once the rule of law uh, is fully enforced, then any political discourse can continue with a larger uh, uh, in an exclusive interview with ZTV, Dr. Yob said that this group has committed horrendous crime by financing, planning, executing a number of criminal activities by displacing various people throughout the nation. According to Dr. Yob, some companies have been doing this financing and law enforcement operation acted to drive this source of this financing. So as part of this law enforcement exercise, you really need to drain the source of this financing. Um, so for now, the account of these um, companies has been suspended, uh, but a full-fledged investigation will be undertaken on how resources have been used, development resources that were supposed to be used for development purpose have been used to uh, dig uh, trenches to buy armaments. So we need to make sure um, uh, everyone is held accountable. So a full-fledged audit and investigation will be undertaken, but as of now, to, to cut the source of this uh, financing. It was very important to put this temporary suspension. But if they have done this, this is completely unlawful, it's illegal. Uh, so uh, the Attorney General has clearly indicated that there should not be any transaction uh, between these companies as of now. So I urge um, all law-abiding citizens uh, and companies, corporations, to adhere fully um, to the directions given by the Attorney General. Dr. Yob urged that law-abiding citizens and companies to adhere fully to the directions given by the Attorney General that there shouldn't be any transaction in between those companies frozen. That's all we had for this news edition. Next up is the full parliament session. Enjoy the show and it's a goodbye for me.